Hey guys, thank you for clicking into this video. In this episode, I will try to convince you that Shanghai is one of the most underrated places to travel, with lots of hidden gems that only locals know. For some context, I used to live and work in Shanghai about 10 years ago, and I was shocked to see just how modern, vibrant, and comfortable the city has become. We will not visit any typical tourist destinations. You are more than welcome to Google those on your own. Instead, we will go on adventures around the city that highlights modern lifestyle and the evolving culture of today's Chinese people. Now, this is important because there's a lot of misconceptions about China, its cities, and many of its wonderful citizens. We will not discuss political ideology and differences in this episode, but simply sit back and celebrate the amazing city and its people. The clips were shown in the order in which it was filmed, but there are timestamps conveniently placed so you can skip to the parts you feel most relevant or interesting to you. Enjoy! We arrived quite late in the evening and we're staying at the Okura Garden Hotel. This is actually a historical hotel. It's very, very old and a lot of the furnishings are a little bit aged as well. But I really love this like old French style decor and it's very authentic. Also, the best thing about the hotel is it's very good value. It's not expensive and it's located right smack in the middle of downtown. So it's very close to a lot of the metro lines and a lot of the malls. And there's also a lot of food and entertainment nearby. Now, this busy intersection that you see before you is Changle Lu and Mao Ming Lu. It's a historical intersection. It's really hard to miss this intersection when you're visiting Shanghai. A lot of traffic pass by here. And there's some old theaters, it's like an old mall. There's a restaurant here called Di Shui Dong that we've been coming for 20 years. It's actually Hunan cuisine. You see here, this is the Zi Yuan Pai Gu. It's a spare ribs with cumin and spices. And these sauteed greens are actually very delicious and fragrant. And behind it, you see skewered prawns. That's actually my mom's favorite dish here. But everybody come here for one thing, which is this fried banana fritters. It's actually fried in this really hard rock sugar that you kind of have to dip into water before you put it in your mouth. But it is actually very caramely, very sweet. It's just a very, very tasty dessert. And we look forward to it every time we come here. This is a night view from our hotel room. And in a minute, you'll see the daytime view. And I'm going to be repeating this throughout the video, but I really love the juxtaposition between the old lane houses and the new modern buildings. Next, I went to Renmin Guangchang or People's Square. It used to be a popular shopping destination, but it's pretty outdated by now. And I came here to do just some banking stuff. Apparently, I still have a bank account that's still active here. I have some alone time walking from bank to bank, closing down my account. It's such a beautiful day. It's cloudy. I think it's about to rain. But I felt a sense of nostalgia uh, for my five years living here. Look at all this beautiful construction around me, like very French, old style building and the smell of the city, the sounds, even the cicadas. Oh my gosh. I don't know, I'm glad I moved out of Shanghai. There are pros and cons about living here, but this really brings back memory and I'm really grateful to be able to relive this experience and be here in this moment and film it for you guys. Now in China, you do have to use a ride hailing service. You cannot get around without it. You can either use Didi, which is an app, or you also have the integrated app within WeChat itself. So you could call a car on WeChat. We went to the other side of the city to visit my friend's massage place. And it is honestly one of the best massages I've ever had. They also have some aromatherapy services here as well. Just five minutes walk away, it's Mix C. This is actually a new mall and I'm actually very, very impressed by this structure. I'm guessing the main building is an office space, but below you see this beautiful retail commercial space. The architecture is just so mind-blowing. There's art installations scattered around the entire compound. And if you see down below, the basement is also a mall, but there's a park surrounding it. We're gonna see throughout the video that Shanghai is actually very invested in landscaping and greenery. There are actually a lot of home gardeners in Shanghai and people love to live with plants. Now towering above us is some kind of overhead bridge. If you look at this whole structure from up above, from the aerial view, this is actually very, very beautiful. And you look at this amazing art installation that's just hanging out by the courtyard. Curious as a cat, we headed down to the underground mall to see what they have in store for us. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this is, but it looks to me like it's a gym. And my gosh, look at how futuristic it looks. Or it could be an apparel store, I have no clue. 
And if you look down below, people are just strolling with their dogs. Shanghai is a very pet friendly city and people here love their pets. From here, we took advantage of the convenient metro system. Shanghai has about 20 metro lines. And here, I'm about to point out the metro station where I used to live. This is so nostalgic for me. We got off at Xintiandi, and this is actually a very popular tourist attraction. A lot of locals come here as well. They have a few phases for Xintiandi. This is the first stage, the older stage, but they also had a, a second stage and a third stage behind. It is always packed, it's always crowded. It's a place to be. A lot of flagship stores are here, whether you're a clothing line or you're FNB. If you look at the right hand side, you see Shake Shack, which has like amazing burgers. I actually used to visit the original Shake Shack when I lived in New York. I would bring my dog and walk over to the booth. And and now they're just everywhere. They're all over the world. It's insane. Now the signature of Xin Tianti is its architecture. Uh, you see all these old lane houses that kept its original facade, but inside it's completely renovated and modernized. It is the next morning and look at that lady dragging that huge bulk of styrofoam. Now we entered a store called Bo Shi Deng. This is apparently their flagship store. We randomly walked in here on Nanjing Lu. I remember we were doing our mobile phone stuff nearby and look at how beautiful the design the clothes are. But also this store is incredibly interactive. Look at all these beautiful features that you can kind of play around with and they explain their technology, their uh, textile technology. And these are some down feather stuff. So you could press a button and it tells you, I, I guess the weight or, or density of these feathers. Now I've traveled all over the world in my lifetime. In fact, this year I went to Tokyo twice, but I've never seen this kind of determination to showcase product quality and tell the brand story. And here you see an uh, interesting room. It's like minus something degrees. It's very, very cold in there, freezing cold, but it is for customers to test their down jackets to see if the jacket is warm enough to withstand this temperature. Comment down below to let me know if you're impressed by this, because I was absolutely taken aback. Back outside, we see a Starbucks reserve roastery. This is a huge, huge Starbucks. And I was also pleasantly surprised to know that Shanghai has a strong coffee culture now. When I was living there 10 years ago, people tend to drink more tea and more traditional drinks. But if you look around now, everywhere you see beautiful coffee shops. And apparently the coffee quality is actually very good. And the prices are also incredibly cheap and affordable. If you look at the wall to the right hand side, you'll see the prices of the beverages in RMB, of course. Hey guys, I'm in this new mall in Shanghai, but an architect friend of mine forwarded the information to come here. So this is by a river, if I'm not wrong, it's the Yangpu River. And as you can see, I'm in a balcony of the building and we'll, we'll see more of the building as we progress, but this is the best place to do an introduction because look at all these amazing, I don't know what you would call it, it's like pedestals of plants. So the concept of this space is like a thousand trees. So I'm assuming that these plants Maybe there's like a thousand of them, uh, these planters. Yeah, Chinese people are very symbolic. Numbers mean something for them, but I really wanted to show you this. Um, on the other side, this is another uh, construction happening. You can hear the sounds of construction. So that is phase two. So I guess they're building that out. And uh, we will sh I will show you the inside of this mall. It's not completely open yet, but there's some really, really beautiful uh, fashion style, F&B, even some lifestyle concepts, including a lot of gyms, yoga studios, uh, hair salons, and things like that. All right, let's check out this building from the outside. It's actually surrounded by residential areas, so it serves a lot of the residences nearby. It is quite lush and green around here, and I remember there's like a river nearby. And if you see in the distance, that's actually the second phase. This building that we're entering now is only the first phase of the total project. Here's another coffee shop inside. Look at how beautiful the decor is. Now I'm gonna show you a few stores in this mall. We basically only walked one direction. We didn't have time to explore all the floors and what they had to offer. The architecture of the mall seems interesting. Look at all this interior decoration around the mall. It's very, very bougie. And here we see a clothing multi-brand stores. I believe the brands are local, but I could be wrong. And then look at this. This is another gym. So every mall that we go to, there will be all these like gyms, Pilates and yoga studios and things like that. So fitness is a big industry in China. Thank you. 
Now this business here, you will never guess what it is. Go ahead, I would like to see you try. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to guess if this is a pet store or a grooming service. And your time is up. So this is actually a cat adoption agency. So this here, it says that these babies are trying to find homes. They have the information of the cats. And, and this guy here, I don't know what his deal is. I'm gonna guess that he might be a volunteer and he just wanted to take care of the cats and spend time with them. I really adore that Shanghainese people adore dogs and cats. It's such a strong pet culture here. Here's a nice view of the outside public area and the river. Please comment down below and let me know if you are impressed by this structure or not. We walked into a restaurant, it's their opening day, and they were very pleased to have us. But this is the first dish that we've ordered. It looks very simple, but it's super delicious. It's got a little bit of that chicken broth flavor, just the right touch of saltiness, and you can actually taste the actual original taste of the vegetable. So we ordered this green pepper lemon fish. It looks really good. Can't wait to try it out. But this is a dish that we don't commonly see everywhere. And if you look closely at the table behind me, there's a lot of commotion going on. There are actually people filming stuff, like using weird lighting and using their mobile phone. So I guess this is not an advertising thing because they're not using professional cameras. I believe this is something that maybe they're filming for TikTok or social media. And this is the dessert that we ordered. It is so beautiful and tasty. On our way down on the other side of the mall, we pass by this entertainment area. So this is some kind of a laser tag. And then there's also this VR place that looks really, really interesting. Imagine if you're a child living in China and having access to all this technology and entertainment. My gosh, times really have changed, haven't they? And this is some kind of music school. And I'm highlighting this because it shows that Chinese people are now are enjoying a wide variety of entertainment and also lifestyle. Look at this bathroom here. It is so beautifully designed and everything is so clean. In a moment time, you'll see a cleaning lady giving me dirty stares behind the mirror. <laughs> Look at the children's hair salon in the background. It is so extra. There seem to be some kind of uh, creative artsy lifestyle store here. They have really good products, but I don't want to film uh, the objects too closely in there, but I was just in there and it was just such an experience. And then there's a lifestyle store here for people who love, I guess, the motorbike culture. Um, the clothing looks really, really interesting, really amazing. And look at all these accessories as well. I think that might be a, a barbecue pit. So this is maybe for someone that also loves the outdoors. Those bags, they look amazing, my gosh. The only problem is that I'm like super broke, but that looks really, really cool, really, really well designed. Wow. I think China is like way beyond any civilization that I've known in terms of like how fast they have grown and adapted to the modern world and even surpassed some of the design sensibilities that we've known in the West. There's these peace pots. Uh, I think it's, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's like some small enclosure that seems to be uh, like soundproof. So you can't hear everything that goes in and out of it. And here it says meet, work, play, relax. So maybe like you can have meetings here. Maybe there's like a table for two. I see some kind of couch setting. And I wouldn't be surprised if you could just like take a nap here or something. But uh, these are the, what the pots look like from the side. They're in a mall, so this is really cool. There is a car showroom on the ground level. Now, I'm really ignorant in terms of cars and car brands, but I don't know this logo. I've never seen it before, and I bet this is probably local made or local brand, but it looks really, really beautiful. Look at the clean lines and the color that is very, very pastel and calming. This looks very, very interesting, the design. 
Yeah, someone comment down below if you know anything about this brand. But it looks very, very interesting. The friendly sales lady explained the brand and the business in really good English, but I did not have a microphone on her, so I'm forced to do a bit of voiceover now. This brand is called Neo. They have some creative centers outside of China, such as in Berlin and London. The cars are manufactured in China though. This model shown here converts to around 42 US dollars. You could also buy it for less if you lease the battery instead of buying and owning it. I love everything about the exterior and interior design of these cars. Everything seems to be in the right place, shape, and color. They look incredibly sleek, modern, and comfortable. And it even comes with an innovative door system as shown here. Okay, you are set. Yeah, okay. you can open it. Yes. Oh, close this off. Close this off. It's Okay. Now I did notice that a lot of passenger cars in Shanghai are electric now, including the ride hailing apps that we use. This seems to be like a coffee shop, some sorts. Look at the seating area, this is very cute. Very, very amazing space, wow. The future is now, look at that, wow. And this, there's another, I think a local car brand here. So I think the future of electrical vehicles in from China is, it's quite big. Look at that, there's a gallery here with this car model. Probably self-driving because I don't see any driver's seat here. Wow, perhaps this is what our future looks like. And if anything, I think this will be realized in China before every any part of Asia. There is a, what do you call this? A wall, a, per, a temporary wall for construction. And it is so thoughtful that they make the uh, wall with these realistic drawings, paintings of people going about their daily activities. That's really cool. We're headed to a creative space over there, but this is the second phase of that Thousand Trees uh, project. And it is worth mentioning that in China, there's all these smart bikes that you could actually rent. You could download an app but you probably have to be a local to do that. And then you could just take one of these bikes, go anywhere you want and drop it off. There is a pet hospital and that green building. From there, you can see that Shanghainese people, they really, really care for their pets. They treat them as an integral part of the family and uh, will dedicate a lot of efforts to maintain their health and wellness. We are in Mo Gan Shan. Uh, it's a creative space with a lot of galleries, and over here, you will see some of the older buildings with a lot of the galleries kind of all over the place. But look at all these uh, names of businesses here. Oh my gosh, look at that. If you're an art lover, I definitely recommend for you to come stop by. This is very cute. Yeah, and by the way, there's a typhoon coming. This is the breeze that you're feeling now. It's probably from the typhoon. That is hilarious. Look at that. Oh, and this too. Oh my gosh. This is way too cute. This is actually very, very large. I'm standing at quite a distance away from them. And oh, I just noticed that turning back around, this is like a coffee shop with just this beautiful uh, wood over here. And look at this ceiling. This is really, really quite a beautiful oh, coffee yeah. shop. Wow. And I think that's the name of the artist in case you want to look him up. Very, very quirky. This is hilarious. And for the coffee shop, this is the stairs to get up there. How cute is that? I wonder if this is like an original feature or if they added this at a later time. This is very cute. It's really making my day. Hello. I don't know what this is, but this is, seems like a dead end. 
So I was explained by a very beautiful and kind lady. She's very thorough, thorough with her introduction. But this is the address, and this is sort of towards the end of the gallery. You kind of have to find your way here. But she explained to me that this is actually a, a concept, like a creative concept of dining. And there's a, co a coffee area here where you can hang out and have an amazing rooftop. I'm going to show you some B-rolls of that rooftop where you can enjoy a nice cup of coffee. And it faces the Thousand Three Trees project that we saw earlier today. This is the coffee shop. And they do have some private dining area here that seats around 16 people and then another one here that sits around uh, eight people. And then it's one of those uh, local dishes that is farm to table. They bring in a lot of the ingredients from their farm in Mokanshan. And then uh, they create this uh, local dishes for you guys. And you cannot select anything on the menu. So it's like uh, one of those set menus where the chef decides what to serve you. And that's my mom walking ahead, but I have this thought in my head. We were walking around and greeted by different people, introduced to their businesses and their stories in Chinese language. And I feel so grateful to be able to understand most of what people are saying. Because my mom, she dropped me off in Singapore when I was six years old. It was very heartbreaking for her, but it was a decision to send us abroad to learn a new language, to get better education, so she made a lot of sacrifices that way. And not many Indonesians actually have the luxury of studying abroad, of having parents let them go and pursue, you know, success, happiness in whatever form they believe in. So I want to thank her. You know, I'm very grateful to, to be able to have mastered this language since I was very little and to be able to understand the world better and to be able to listen to these stories and to be able to recount these stories for you. Now it is time for some nightlife. We are on Jingxian Lu. This is actually a street, a very short street right behind a hotel. There's tons of bars and small restaurants here. Even this one tan shop has got an upgrade in terms of looks and cleanliness. You will notice a lot of people sitting on these camping stools on the sidewalk. It is actually very charming and a very social experience. This was not like this 10 years ago. My brother ordered a cocktail because he's actually opening a bar here in Jakarta. So he wanted to test the skills of the bartenders and he's actually impressed by them. We walked into a second bar and this was very, very highly rated. Look at that cute dog mascot just sitting outside. Now it does get crowded in here. Thankfully, we came in early. We got some seats very fast, but it got crowded very quickly. And the drinks here were actually fantastic. They had some interesting creative cocktails and the crowd here was loud, vibrant and also interesting. After too many cocktails, we are both very tipsy. It was a short walk back to the hotel, thankfully. The next morning, it was apparently clear that the typhoon is upon us. Thankfully, there's no wind or anything, but the incessant rain was quite annoying borrowed a hotel umbrella. So a typhoon is upon us and we're feeling the light rain. And uh, yesterday we had a shabu shabu buffet dinner. And I've been going to that place for about 15 years and it has the best beef there. They even have this sashimi beef that you could eat raw with soy sauce and wasabi. I'm glad that it's still around even though it's moved this location. I'm gonna include the information on the screen, but I really recommend it. It's one of the best beef shabu shabu in the world. Even my brother has attested to that fact. Now I filmed this because somewhere along this row was my old apartment. So I renovated this really old place on the first level and it just looks beautiful. And my friend Timmy actually took over the lease when I left. Honestly, I don't remember which house it was because everything's changed in the last 10 years. And also I have the worst memory ever, but we're taking this car right towards a beautiful building. 
I cannot find a proper English name for our next attraction, but someone mentioned Henderson Tsifu Tiendi on Google, so I'm gonna go with that. You will not find this on Google Map because Google no longer function in China. The links to the location in this episode, by the way, will be typed out in the video description, but it opens in Baidu Maps, which is China's version of Google. Anyways, back to this amazing building. This is clearly a celebrated architectural feat. It is photogenic and impressive from every angle. If someone has something smart to say about the design or the background of this building, let's hear it in the comment section. I particularly love the planters and live plants that are integrated into the building. Now, I was told that the upstairs are offices and the public can no longer access to it, but the lower levels are filled with shops, eateries, and bars. After half a day of exploration, we were both very, very hungry. So we wandered into this random restaurant, but we were really impressed. It was actually nicely decorated on the inside and it got filled up really quickly during lunch hour. Now, when I eat at restaurants, I don't know, usually I ask the waiters what their favorite food is and just go with it. And we were not disappointed. Within 10 minutes walk, we arrived at Shintendi Style 2. This is actually a mall that has a lot of interesting local brands in it. And look at all this beautiful landscaping in the mall. I don't know how these plants manage to survive here because a lot of them are actually full sun plants, but they seem to be doing okay. And I have an emotional story to share because that down there, you see those barricaded store, that used to be my store. I don't know if you guys know this, but I used to be a menswear clothing designer. So I used to have a brand here in Shanghai and this one one store here actually bankrupted the business. I mean, it's the wrong location. It was right by the metro and everything. It was very expensive, but we're not gonna delve in the past. Let's explore the rest of the mall. Now, a lot has changed in the last 10 years. This is an interesting chocolate store. Look at the decor. And here you can see a cactus flavored ice cream. How cool is that? I came across this VR space and being the curious cat that I am, I slowly and gingerly walked in to see how much of it I can film and show you guys. This seemed to be a musically themed bar slash cafe. You can see there's a setup for live music and there's also vinyl everywhere, but I really find this kind of setup very lively and interesting. Now, if you look down below, there's a fashion event happening. It's by the brand Nautica. Honestly, I thought this brand died out a while ago, but I guess they're having a resurgence or rebranding or whatever. And there's a cute little corgi there. But I want you to look around at the crowd. Everyone is so beautifully dressed and everyone's so well put together. Fashion is a really, really big and important industry in China and people here are becoming very expressive. I did realize that there was a lot more individuality and diversity than it was 10 years ago. As someone who worked in fashion for more than 10 years, even I'm impressed by this. The music, fashion, art scene seemed very mature. You know, we talk about Korean style, Japanese style, but I am now seeing the China style. Now this jewelry store here is mind blowing. This is like really impeccable design, really nice visual display. And I'm very, very inspired by this. And over here, it looks like some kind of gallery or exhibition, but it is a sign to go downstairs and there is a brand list. So when we do come down, we see an interesting department store. There's a lot of creative brands, creative products, lifestyle happening down below. And look at this visual display here. I believe this is some kind of fragrance company, fragrance business, and they lay out their products so wonderfully, so professionally, and in a way that is very inspiring. And this tells the brand story in a really meaningful way. And here's another sports center and it looks really busy inside.
And this is an interesting bakery. And if you don't mind, we're gonna spend a minute to have a gander. Everything here looks so pleasing and appetizing. Look at that there. There's some kind of ham and cheese on a black colored bun. And look at all these pastries here. My mouth was watering. And I actually ended up getting this. This is a taro in a bun. It was actually very tasty. It was not too sweet at all. As we left the mall, we were pleasantly surprised to see people setting up some booths outside. And in case you didn't know, this is actually my side channel. My main channel is houseplant related and it's called Only Plants. Feel free to check that channel out if you're into houseplants. We came across this truck that was flooded with people even before the event started. I found out that they are a skateboard park business that has several trains across the city. They offer lessons in skateboarding. These wonderful products you see before you were designed to complement that lifestyle. I ended up buying a hat here. This is an interesting back store. I've not seen woven leather like this before, but this is really, really quite an interesting way to weave the leather. This is nice. Very good product design. And there's some ceramics as well, ceramic works. Oh, look at this kitty cat here. Shanghainese are actually really obsessed with hats. There's like some really cool cats and dogs here. This one is particularly naughty. Look at that one. Wow. I've not seen artwork this vibrant from China. I mean, we would see these flamboyant designs out of Indonesia and Thailand, but this is representing the current generation here in China. Their products, their hard work, really cool. And this must be the work of an illustrator that is converted into these products, including uh, phone cases. It's very, very expressive. Kokodama and a nice pot. Check out my plant video. I do the plant tour video in China. Look at this crowd. You can tell that there's insatiable demand for these creative goods. People literally rushed over here when the booths opened. In fact, people like this will probably pop up more and more here if, if this is so well received here. In case you guys are wondering, this market is right outside of Xinchengdi style, Xinchengdi style 2 building. And there's like all these wonderful coffee shops around here as well. And it's really nice in the summer. Oh, this is a dog adoption agency, I guess. So you could adopt them or you can do some social work around animals. That's really cool. And somehow a lot of the animals up for adoption in Shanghai are very cute. Look at that, this chihuahua is super cute. I'm wondering though, like maybe a lot of people uh, bought hats over COVID and now that it's over, maybe a lot of people are letting them go and then they're up for adoption because yesterday when we were in the mall, we saw a lot of cats up for adoption as well. So yeah, the pet industry here is definitely very interesting, but I do know that they splurge, they spend a lot of money and they find the good breeds and they take really good care of their pets, as if they're their own children. Please pardon my voiceover because the microphone was messed up during this portion. But this is an aromatherapy brand. What you see in front of you, you can actually burn and it will release natural aromatics that is beneficial for you. And the owner is actually Sarah. We're gonna say hi to her in a minute. And next to Sarah, this is her friend's son. And he's interning here. I believe he's from the States, but I could be wrong. He's interning and helping her out in Shanghai. And this is their beautiful product. I have left their Instagram on the screen in case you wanted to check them out. This is a very interesting booth. It's online farming together. I don't exactly know the concept in full, but you could apparently scan and buy a product, but you don't take it back with you immediately. That uh, they would send it to you when they are ready, when they are ripe or when they're in season, but it's interactive. Apparently, like when you own the product or when you scan something, when you buy it, you could see its progress. You could learn more about how it's made and things like that. And that could be very wrong, but this is a very, very interesting concept. And there are some aromatherapy here. This is really beautiful. Look at the shape of this candle. And the packaging is just beautiful. Yeah, there's some different flavors here. Look at this, oh my God. <laughs> oh, this is like super cute, look at that. And this is like a very popular meme. I don't know who made it, but an interesting character. He looks so stoned, oh my gosh. So cute. And there's a blow-up doll here, too. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, you guys. This is their bloody food court. It looks amazing. This is in Shintiandi, in their, main, in their main building. From Shintiandi, we walked around 10 minutes to this mall called K11. It is actually a popular mall above a subway station, and I believe this is a Hong Kong developer. If I'm not wrong, this is like a local coffee shop chain and I really love their interior design. There seems to be some kind of futuristic vehicle, some kind of scooter. I don't know what to say about it except it looks really, really interesting. Now there's a lot of food options upstairs, tons of restaurants, but a lot of them are actually packed. So be prepared to wait if you come during dinner time. We got a queue number for a Cantonese restaurant, but we went upstairs just to see if there are better options up there. If you look way in the back, there's actually a really fancy restaurant. I don't know what they serve, but look at how amazing the decoration looks. After waiting for about an hour, we finally got our Cantonese food. After dinner, I dropped my mom off at the hotel and went out for some more nightlife. We decided to go to Bar Ego, and this is actually the owner that's saying hi to us right now. There's a gathering of about 20, 30 of us friends. We haven't seen each other in a very long time since COVID, and it's such a nice catch up. By the way, this bar is mostly men only, if you know what I mean. After a few drinks, we walked towards a nightclub. I honestly can't remember the name of this club, but it was actually very interesting and intense. Everyone was having a good time, the music was actually quite good, and nobody was smoking indoors. I remember when I lived there 10 years ago, they just started implementing the ban. I'm glad to see it in effect. This club came with like a little dark room in the back with like weird music and interesting lighting. All right, so I just left a interesting nightclub. Very, very drunk. And you can hear the sound of Saturday night around us. There's traffic. It's like uh, 3 a.m. in the morning. So you can see that Shanghai is quite alive at night on the weekends. And everyone is drunk. There is a strong drinking culture here in China. That's a cool car. I feel immense gratitude to be here. Not many people get to revisit their pasts and record it and share it on YouTube. I'm grateful that you're here with me. I smile because there's, uh, there's someone walking, two very cute dogs. By the way, this here is a KTV, it's a karaoke place that me and my friends used to go to. So shout out to you if you're watching this, especially you, son. I'm talking to you, son. You used to come here. And my shop is way over there, was way over there. And I, I don't know, man. I miss this. This is amazing. And it's, it's, a, it's a good feeling that this city has moved on without us. It's moved on. It's like a whole new level. The people, the ideas, it's a whole new level. And I wish that we were here. This is the best Nike store behind me and it's beautiful. I'm not saying that because I'm drunk, but I'm just, it's, it's a well put together shop. The visual merchandising here is really, really good. In the fashion retail, the competition is very, very strong. This Under Armour over there. The fashion retail is very competitive and the visual merchandising has to be top notch. So the people really made the work here. And I'm glad to be able to take in all these creativity, storytelling, and sort of absorb it and be inspired. I don't know in into what form. But again, immense gratitude tonight to be able to be here with my friends, to be able to afford this. You know, my parents, they really have afforded me a lot of luxury and, and enabled me to have all these experiences in life. There's a bunch of good looking bikers behind me. This is really interesting. I don't know where they're going. I really don't. But this is the country, this is the city where people are going places. 
believe me. This is a beautiful city that nobody comes and visit anymore. That's a little kitty cat. It's like going home. And um, this earlier this evening, I saw a lady feeding the cats. She was like out with her palm full of food. And the cats were out here and they were feeding off of her hands. And I've seen that when I was living in Shanghai, where people show kindness to animals, whether they are strays or a home, you know, whether they're pets. And that is so beautiful to watch. Try to make it here to Shanghai. If you can, you will learn a lot of lessons and go out to drink, go out in the daytime, give yourself enough time to explore the city and all of its history and all of its wonders and beauty. And of course, interact with the people if you can. The people here seem cold at first, they may be rude, but deep down, they are curious and kind people. I believe that. Gotta let you go, I'm almost there. And people are staring. People are staring because I'm recording myself. Good night. The next morning, the typhoon made way for a clear blue skies. This is some of the best sky I've seen in my life. We're driving by the France concession area in Xuhui. It's known for its picturesque tree-lined streets and low-rise French-style residential. Further down, this is Xujiahui, a dense residential area with malls and great metro connections. When I first moved to Shanghai, I stayed in this area. Now, 15 years ago, this area had grey skies and barely any greeneries. But coming back now, I noticed that it was transformed beyond recognition. These motorists with yellow hats are Kwaidi. They are courier delivery people equivalent to DHL or FedEx. They have these cute accessories attached to their helmet to encourage the drivers to wear them for safety. Of course, it did help that we just had a typhoon, so it maybe blew away some of the dusty air. But look at how crystal blue that sky is in contrast with the clouds. And the greenery on both sides of the streets are very, very impressive. We have arrived at a mall called Ruye Guang Zhongxing. Look at this futuristic pet store. Further proof that Shanghainese people love their pets. Next, we come across a really cool archery place. These setup here look so professional and legit. There's also some kind of music recording studio next to it. This is an escape room and it seemed really packed with people. It was a Sunday after all. There's also a fancy skate school for kids here. Shanghai truly is an incredibly modern and comfortable city. The younger generation is finding time and disposable income for leisure and hobby. This is spicy mala hot pot and it is an incredibly popular delicacy across China. This is one of my favorite meals. Just across the street, we entered Tian Zhifang, an entire city block of unique shopping experience carved out of old lane houses. So I'm in Tai Kang Lu now. We used to come here a lot. Uh, it's very gentrified now. Everything is very commercialized. All the stores here have been utilized. But in the past, they were actual houses where old timey people live here. And it was a lot more dirty, like their laundry all over here, like all over uh, overhead us. And it's very crowded now. I think it's evolved quite a bit, um, but it's cute. There's a lot of crafty uh, local designer brands and some handmade products. Yeah, I'm looking around, I'm very impressed with some ceramics over here. So I'll show you what I can, but a lot of places here, they don't really uh, encourage photography. So I gotta be careful about that. This is a perfume store that has every fragrance possible. Look at the selection here. I don't know how anyone finds the time to go through all these bottles. And they all had some quirky names on them as well. This bottle here says, when I was 17. I don't know when you're watching this video, but it is the middle of July and it's very nice. I mean, it tends to be a bit hot and humid, but I prefer it to cold and wet in the winter time. It can get rainy and can get very cold. 
So this is very nice and it's just really good weather. We just had a typhoon two days ago. So the sky is clear and it's very blue and uh, people are out enjoying this good weather and all these wonderful products and this ambience around us. This is very unique. And if you come to Shanghai, this is definitely one place that you must visit. I noticed that a lot of the vendors uh, do jewelry here. If you grew up in Asia, you would probably know this, this White Rabbit brand. Uh, it's, this, it's this vanilla, creamy flavored uh, White Rabbit candy. This is their classic flavor. And it's the first time that I'm seeing all the other varieties in here. And you can buy the little, this is very cute. I'm actually very curious to know what they taste like. And they have like these large ones too. <laughs> this is hilarious. Little kitty cat here in a sock store. Beautiful, look at all these socks here. Zhongguo Qingnian, this is very cute actually. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of socks here and this looks beautiful. I'm gonna do a bit of shopping here. Pardon the noise here, but there seems to be some kind of workshop over here. Really interesting, some kind of acrylic or lipstick making? I don't know what, the, what, it, what ha was happening here, but there's all these pots on the tables. This is a... Oh my gosh! Lipstick Academy, this is fun. It's really cool, so I guess you get to melt your own lipstick, you gotta mix your own color, and these are some samples. This is very cool. Yeah, that's the name of the business if you wanna check it out. Bai Hua Sheng. And just so you know, these are the original stairs and they lead upstairs. So I've actually been to a few of these old houses. And in fact, I had the luxury of living in one myself where I renovated it. So it is very interesting to set up. Everything is very compact. People live in very constricted spaces. And uh, the ambience is, is very, very interesting. That the old style, and they still exist today. The traditional way of living. Bye little kitty cat. Take care of the store, take care. There's a cool magic shop here with all the magic tricks. So the sign here says that this is a nostalgic store from the 80s. And I'm guessing that they carry a lot of nostalgic products. <coughs> Pardon me. Like snacks and stuff. These are very adorable, look at this. They have like these uh, propaganda sort of things. Let me see. Goes to work. The might as well to farm. I don't know the English. <laughs> That's what it says in Chinese. And the work here on the blackboard is quite exquisite too. This is really cool. Will you look at that? The old and the new converge right here in this frame. And the beautiful sky that we're having today. Happy to be able to immortalize it on YouTube. Hope you guys are enjoying this atmosphere as much as I am today. This is Best Hand Cream. So there's a lot of these stores actually. So these are all like local beauty products with old timey type uh, packaging. They seem to be doing well because there's many of these stores and there used to not be any here. Here's another such store. It's really beautiful. It's very noisy in there for some reason, but it is really, really beautiful. I'm going to go inside actually. Please pardon the noise. I think there's some renovation happening here. But this is all like local made beauty products. It's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, this is literally made for men. This is, this means uh, song lao shi for teachers. This is for mother, for your friend, for your wife, for your sister. This is such a funny way to display products and May, again, this is probably made for men because men would be clueless as to what products to bring home to buy for their female friends and families. But beautiful packaging here. And by the way, I've only shown you the tip of the iceberg. Only a few products, a few stores. There's literally, I don't know, four or 500 stores here very easily and a lot of really, really interesting products. And I don't want to spoil it for you guys. So you do want to come here and check these things out. There's a gallery behind me with a lot of people 
So come check this place out. And this is very weather permitting. If it's raining or if it's like too cold, it might be miserable. But today is a one such fine day to be here. I really love this repurposed space. And again, this place used to be lane houses. And I believe they knocked a few down to create this huge loft that we're seeing here. And look at those, that's some intense workstation there. It looks very robotic. And this is also beautiful, the cash register here. Very, very stylish. So they are a t-shirt store. I guess um, this is some of the artworks that they have. And these are the, the 12 animals in the Chinese zodiac. This is an art studio. Look at that roof, it's so beautiful. And the centerpiece here with the sculpture. This is really beautiful. Look at the curvature on her. This is really well done. This is a really cool coffee roaster. Got all this elaborate machine here. This shop looks so intense. I believe this is a Kai Zhang. Kai Zhang is a, a seal stamp. Uh, people actually use it to uh, official, officiate official documents and such. This is such a beautiful store. Look at the plants around this, all the vining plants. Gorgeous. This seems to be a jewelry studio with some people inside. A gorgeous antique store. And the master here drawing some calligraphy. You could bring this back. And this is actually very beautiful because it's done in a contemporary method. Can you come Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this is the master who's doing a um, live demonstration. But this is actually very beautiful. It's about 300, some of them are 600, but really, really cool. Like the composition and the font, the typography, it's something that is not uh, traditional, but using traditional techniques. The bartender is readying himself for the evening. This is so cool. Look at all the colored bottles. It's beautiful. This is an interesting looking chocolate store. They do have some fancy products, but they had some music on, so I had to do a voiceover here. Look at this amazing array of cookies. They all look so mouthwatering, particularly the ones that had like tangerine or orange embedded in them. We left Tianzhifang shortly and went to explore the city just randomly nearby the hotel. I can't get over this charming little cafe and bar in front of this old residential block. There's a million reasons why this shop shouldn't be here, but it is. Shanghainese people make do with what they have and it works. The reason I'm spending weeks to edit this incredibly long episode is because I think people need to see just how charming and innovative and inspiring Shanghai is and see if you can make the time to come witness it with your own eyes. It is our last day, but we were rewarded with this gorgeous sunset. We had dinner at this bar near our hotel. They had amazing cocktail, music, and fusion food. Food culture is strong in Shanghai. We have not had mediocre food at all this entire trip. It is my last night here, so I walked past Jingxianlu one more time. This old shop house is an example of the old building being got renovated from the inside to make way to modern sensibilities. It is this contrast that makes Shanghai so charming and unique. Oliver is a German friend of mine of over 15 years. He took me to this interesting compound hidden behind a lane. He has lived and worked in Shanghai as an architect for over 20 years and is responsible for some of the buildings that we saw earlier on in this episode. Thank you, Oliver. This is a modern electric vehicle being charged inside a very old lane house. This contrast is just so mind-blowing to me. On my way back, there's a cookie store that had way too many options for cookies. 
The next morning, I passed by an incredibly popular new attraction in Shanghai, the Wukong Mansion. This is my last bit of adventure before I head to the airport. Now, this year alone, I visited countless cities, including two trips to Japan. Shanghai was the best city by a really wide margin. Keep in mind, I did not cover the most popular or predictable tourist destinations in this vlog. Some of these places are actually incredible and worth visiting. Now, everyone that I met in this trip were curious to know where I came from and were eager to share their stories. It was impressive to observe the next generation of Chinese people. They are generally more considerate, smart, health conscious, environmentally conscious, and display diverse personal styles. The new Chinese youth are not afraid to express who they are. The city itself was so green, clean, and modern, you will never run out of things to do while you are here. It is also incredibly safe. You will not see any crime or violence here. However, there are some things worth knowing before you visit. Unless you're traveling with a tour guide, you will need a few essential Chinese apps to survive, and probably a whole lot of research to prepare yourself for your trip. We saw lots of visitors being lost and having the worst time because of miscommunication, unpreparedness, or complete disregard for the Chinese systems and culture. All right, this is the airport. I have to sign off now, but I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Be sure to leave a thumbs up and comment down below with your thoughts. Bye.